Jesus Christ. Alright, time for the third one. <clears throat> Alright, so... Alaska and Zach are currently on the mission. Oh, Fluffy, tell us that you set your alarm for the wrong time. Oh, no. No! How could you? Uh, uh, it's okay. We all make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Da 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 da. Womp womp. Yeah, indeed. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, this began at like 12 p.m., but, nah. Uh, well, hey, look on the bright side, Fluffy Toasted. Uh, I'm recording this right now on my dad's laptop, so, uh, when I, uh, record this back on my phone, when it's playing back on the laptop, when I can, like, uh, record it off of my phone, and I can send that to YouTube, so there will be a hearable playback of everything I just said, so everything I'm saying right now is being documented, just as long as the charger of the, of the computer never accidentally lets out, because then all the progress will be lost. Anyways, that, <clears throat> well, was, that's why I'm separating the recordings, so, like, yeah, I, I'm sure you get the point. But anyways, third movie, third movie, here we go. Alright, so, Zack and Alaska, they've been sent out on a mission to, uh, find out what strange wavelengths are happening around the North Pole. <laughs> Zack has a jet. It's like a it's like a jet, it's like a type of jet with, like, the little, like, uh, engines at the nose of the aircraft, and it, like, sucks it in and poos it out the back and stuff. Like, the little, like, MIG aircrafts and stuff. The, the ones that look like rockets and stuff. Uh, like, the ones with, like, uh, like, nose cone type of, uh, engines in the front, you know? Like, Cold War type of en uh, engines on the jets and stuff. That's casting, uh, Zach flies. And Alaska flies just a biplane, but with engines on it. Yeah, rocket engines on it. <clears throat> How creative is that? So they're up in the North Pole, they start seeing, like, the ice cap. And they land on the ice cap. And they see this giant, like, phoenix bird thing. It's like, they see it's like a, like, metal winged beast. It's like a robot. Um, a robot like bird with like some yellow on it. It's like the size of it's like the size of Godzilla or like a Godzilla Titan. Uh, so they try and fight it, but they can't. Uh, so they turn back and they report back to Erisus and everyone else. And they're like, "There's this weird like monster thing up in the North Pole. What the fuck do we do with it?" And they're like, eh, "Just don't worry about it." And then, and then every robot and automated machine on the entire planet starts going rogue. And, uh, starts trying to capture, uh, Erethus and starts, like, trying to, like, uh, like, uh, take down, like, Erethus and her friends and all that. <clears throat> so, like, even microwaves, even toasters, even fucking, like, uh, TVs are trying to take her over. Uh, are trying to take over the world and stuff. It's like an AI revolution. So... Uh, that's when everyone figures out that, like, Erisus lo looks into the coding of, uh, one of, like, the machines, the one of the rogue machines they captured, and, uh, they figured out, uh, that it has the same type of code in it as Alex the Robot Cat, which must mean that every other machine in the world is now infected with the same, like, type of coding that Alex has. But why would that be the case, and why is everything going after Erethus? So, uh, the friends get a call, uh, that somewhere in Egypt there's trouble, so they go over and, uh, ask, like, uh, the ruler of Egypt, uh, well, in my universe, not the actual Egypt, but you know what I mean, uh, the ruler's Anubis, and, uh, they talk to him and, uh, ask what's going on, and Anubis is like, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of, uh, robots happening here. Uh, the robot armor that, uh, we wear is taking over our bodies and stuff like that. So, everyone tries to save the day. They go into this, like, a uh, uh, like, uh, temple. And then the temple is set ablaze on fire by Alex the Robot Cat, who suddenly shows up out of nowhere. And then he kidnaps Erethus. He, ta he takes Erethus. Uh, weakens her, weakens her friends as well with guns, and blasts off in the air with her. 
and then takes her to some, like, a dark castle in hell knows where. So, now it's up to Eris' friends to save her. What's cool about this plot, I think, is that in the first The Lives of Destiny story, it was about Eris, who is a princess, and her friends going to rescue another princess who used to be their friend. Now, it's about Eris, who is a who is the princess who needs to be rescued by her other friends. Kind of cool, right? Like, the previous leader is now the one in peril. She's now the damsel in distress. So, Eris is now locked away in the highest uh, point in the castle, locked in a room. And it is revealed that Captain Benson was behind it all. He is plotting his little plot fingers on Eris. He's like, he's like motion his fingers coming up with plans and all that and he has the Drayson Slayer he has the Drayson Slayer and he he, he has it from uh, Vixen uh, he got it back from Vixen actually it's this like glowing red sword that is designed to kill Drayson's while it acts like a normal sword to anyone else like I mentioned before it acts like a lightsaber to Drayson's acts like a sword to everyone else Okay. <clears throat> so, Cassie and Rebecca lead the, our friends, uh, well, well, the only two our friends there is Tina and Hiccup. They all go and find where, uh, Erisys has gone to and where she was taken to. Uh, there are no leads of evidence anywhere where she's gone. And, uh, in the meanwhile, uh, Rebecca and Cassie tell uh, Alaska and Zach to work together and uh, uh, find out other places where these robots are so uh, they can possibly track those to see if they go anywhere near where Erisist is. Okay. Alright. So, it's pretty much... A lot of the movie from here from here on forth for the entirety of the second act is uh, there's uh, some scenes where Alaska and Zach are flying and evading like robots and shooting them down and stuff. While the other half of the scenes are Cassie, Rebecca, Tina, and Hiccup all uh, trying to go around uh, the country to find out where Erisist is while trying to communicate back to Alaska and Zack. But their communications are lost due to how far distance they are. That's when, in the meanwhile, Zack loses control of his jet, and so does Alaska after being shot at by other pirates, and they get sent down to where Egypt is. But they're, uh, but they, but both of them crashed on opposite sides of the desert. But they're both alive and fine. They both ejected. We're all good. We're all good. We're all peachy. So, Alaska finds this, like, crashed, like, like, spaceship just, like, sticking upright in the sand dunes. And she goes in it, and she tries to, like, find a way to communicate back with her other friends and stuff to, uh, give any leads on information and stuff about where Erythus could be. Uh... And it works. It works. Uh, she tells everyone she's alright. Uh, she saw Zack, like, zip down further into the sky and crash somewhere else. And yeah. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, Zack is in the heart of Egypt, uh, which is basically, like, the site where Erisus was taken at. And... And meets with Anubis. But, uh, due to some, uh unwanted attention, uh, the, the suits, uh, are uncontrollably, uh, going, like, the suits, the armor that, uh, the Egyptians wear are, like, moving on their own, and they're going after, uh, Zach, who gets on this, like, dune buggy, and they all kind of, like, and there's, like, a whole, like, chase scene throughout the sand dunes, it's, like, all Mad max and shit, there's, like, like, guns, like, shooting at and stuff, and, uh, Zack is the only one who doesn't use a gun, and instead, he just relies on luck to evade the bullets, and it works. 
not because of plot armor, but because of armor, so to speak. We'll get more into that in the fourth movie. So, that is when he just keeps riding into the sand dunes, and meanwhile, Alaska uh, finds Zack's crashed jet and repairs it. Uh, her plane was completely obliterated to pieces, but Zack's jet was all in one piece still, although disabled, so she fixes it, and Zack comes back. Uh, he gets the jet, and they both uh, get in it, and they fly away into into the into the sky again to escape the the robot armor uh, of the Egyptians who don't want to kill them, but the armor does because the armor is a robot. The, ar the armors are robots. Think of it as like wearing an animatronic suit that does its own thing while you have no control over it. That's basically what those are. <sighs> so. That is when uh, Zack and Alaska are in the sky, and then something else happens where Alaska had to eject from Zack's aircraft, but Zack remained inside. Uh, I think it was like a robot that was like coming after. I said, "Oh wait, no, it was Alex. Alex was like flying right after them, and he shot a missile at them, and it like, yeah, and Alaska had to eject or whatever, and like." Zack was, like, the only one left in the jet, and he was, like, and it was all in the fly. So, uh, Alaska parachutes down into a forest nearby a town, and there is, and it's right by this, like, historic war, uh, this historic war museum that's, like, outside, and there's a bunch of these, like, war machines that are, like, outside in the field and stuff, including, including this, like, massive, like, wheel, this, like, massive, like, Ferris wheel-sized metal disc, uh, that is standing upright, and, uh, there's, like, a room, a small little, like, room that looks like a cable lift, like, uh, thing, like, in the middle of it, in the middle of the axle, and this machine was used for, uh, rolling down hills, uh, and while evading, uh, like, uh, gunfire due to how tall it was. It's a silly little design. It's basically a vehicle where, like, uh, the wheel goes all around you, and your, uh, like, uh, cockpit is in the middle of the wheel, if that makes sense. But it's massive. It's, like, towering in heights. So, uh, Alaska spots that, and then she meets up with Cassie, Rebecca, Hiccup, and Tina again. Also, I want to mention, uh, that, uh, uh, earlier on, Tina's wings were, uh, shot by Alex, so, uh, she can't fly, so she's not really useful for what happens later on. <laughs> so, uh, the friends who are trying to find Eris, now including Alaska on their team, uh, go into this, like, like, giant death wheel thing, and they start rolling, and they accidentally demolish the town that is right below them. And they, uh, fly right past it, they're going, like, 100 miles an hour on this, like, giant wheel. Uh, and there's, like, a bunch of, like, uh, planes that, like, come after them and stuff, and, like, flying right after them. They start opening fire on them. Uh, luckily, the, the, luckily they're firing from behind, so, like, the thin metal disc is, like, a, like being made of metal is, like, blocking all the bullets and, like, deflecting them. Some of them even shooting back at the airplanes that are firing at them. Uh, then they, it gets to a point where they eventually, they eventually roll to where they think Aerithist is. It's this, like, ashy castle, like, in the middle of a lava moat. And it's a towering lava moat. Like, picture the the dark castle from the original Shrek movie, uh, but the moat itself is massive, it's like an ocean of fire, and the, and like the island in the middle is just a pillar, a tiny little pillar in the middle by comparison, with a tiny little castle in it, like, like it, it doesn't even look like a moat, it just looks like a gigantic lake of fire, uh, with a tiny little pillar in the middle. That's basically what it is. And along uh, the along the gigantic moat, 
uh, there's like a few towers, there's a few little towers with a thin little chain connecting to each and every one of them until leading up to the tiny little, like, uh, it's actually massive, but the tiny little, uh, column that the castle rests on in the middle of the flaming lava moat. So, the wheel is spinning out of control, uh, they're about to go right into the lava, uh, and, uh, Cassie and her friends, uh, they take a rope, and they, uh, hook it onto some, like, part of the axle of the, of the spinning, like, wheel thing, and they, uh, like, and they, like, rope down to the, to the surface, uh, of the ground, uh, kind of like how, like, uh, in End of Toy Story 2, when, like, Woody and Jesse just, like, uh, uh, like, badassfully, like, swoosh down to the runway or whatever from the plane or whatever. Uh, so they get off of that, they see the disc not go into the lava, but it just turns away a little bit, and it's, like, rolling, uh, it's, like, rolling along the ground really fast, like, how, like, uh, a hula hoop kind of, like, rolls on the ground, it's slightly, slightly angled, so it, like, turns, and it starts, like, going in circles and stuff until it, like, eventually falls on its side, and makes a loud thud. <laughs> And the only plane left, the only pirate plane left, yes, these pirates have planes now, not just airships, uh, it's flying right overhead them, and, uh, and the middle, in, like, the middle section, like, the, like, the cable car looking section of the, of the wheel, uh, it detached, and it crashed onto, uh, the ground and nearby the lava moat, and that is, uh, where a lot of them are taking cover at. A lot of the characters are taking cover from the plane fire there. The plane lands, and, uh, Alaska is down there, and along with, uh, Tina, who's been hit again, and Hiccup is in the center as well, and, uh, just before the pilot can get out and shoot them all to bits, Cassie blows the dude's head off, the pilot's head off. Uh, yeah, wait, hold on, my dad's here real quick, I'll be right back. pilot, uh, it's a two-seater, so they decided that Hiccup and Tina weren't really gonna be helpful in this little mission right here, so they sent them back home with that plane. Uh, so Alaska was, uh, the only one, like, left remaining aside from Cassie and Rebecca, who were there. Uh, so, they had to go in, they, they had to cross over the moat, which only had a chain connecting to it, which it was actually a massive chain, by the way. It's, like, twice the size of them, uh, into the castle or whatever. So, they cautiously, uh, like, used the chain as, like, a, like, a type rope, Brit, uh, as, as the bridge, and, uh, they rest at each little, like, pillar before eventually, like, uh, getting to the middle, and they, and they make it. Alaska was told to stay out of it, uh, and Rebecca would watch after, would watch after Alaska while waiting outside, and it was up to Cassie to go in, because Cassie is Aerith's girlfriend, if you don't know already. Oh yeah, I don't think I mentioned that yet. Yeah, Cassie is, uh, Aerith's best friend and girlfriend, uh, but on the, on, I, this is the only part of this plot that I'm really struggling to decide on. 
Uh, I don't know what you guys think I should do. Uh, so, because, like, uh, I want to have it where, like, uh, Cassie goes in first, so, like, the plot later on makes more sense. You'll see why in a few minutes. But, but at the same time, it would be cool if it was Rebecca who went in first, because she is the one who got rescued by Erisys in the first movie. You know what I mean? And now it's Rebecca to rescue Erisys. What do you guys think it should be? What do you guys think it should be? Well, I'll talk more on continuing it later to make your final decision, but I just want to know your, what you think is best right now. They do both go in eventually to rescue Erisys, but one of them goes in first. What are you guys thinking? Cassie, since you said it, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, fair enough. Alright, <laughs> All right. so, so Cassie enters uh, the castle first, and uh, Rebecca is tailing right behind her. Well, no, Ca well, no Rebecca is just waiting outside, uh, like, keeping an eye on Alaska, because she's still, like, a kid, she's 15. Rebecca and Cassie are adults, they're 20. So, uh, Cassie is in the castle, and, uh, she takes her sword out and starts, uh, slaying the other little pirate star in there, and eventually makes it to the top keep of the castle, the top tower, and, uh, Erisus is like, no, it's a trap! And then, uh, from behind them, uh, when, as soon as Cassie, like, enters, uh, Erisus' cell, uh, Captain Benson, uh, sneaks up from behind them, holding the Drayson Slayer, and then marches in, uh, brushes, uh, Cassie past, uh, past them, and tries to slay, like, cat, like, uh, Erisys right then on the spot, but the tip just about grazes her, but it was still enough damage to keep her paralyzed on the ground. It was like a lightsaber to her, like, just the tip of the blade, just the very millimeter tip of the blade is enough to keep a Drayson, like, paralyzed for a, for a while on the ground. So, Erisys is like, oh, no, 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 Cassie is, like, checking in on Erisys to make sure she's okay. She's like, she looks dead, but she's not. Uh, uh, so Cassie's really worried, and, uh, Cassie looks up at, uh, at, uh, Captain Benson, and she's like, what have you done? And then, uh, he's like, I've done all that's the best, or something like that. And then the two sword fight. The two sword fight. Epic climax sword fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Action. That's what we've been waiting for. Woo! Yeah, baby. That's what we've been waiting for. That's all about. Woo! So they're sword fighting. They're sword fighting. And then it gets to a point where they uh, go outside and they're continuing the sword fighting. And they're dangerously close to the lava moat. They're dangerously close to the lava moat. And, uh, that is, that it, and it's decided that, uh, and then Rebecca decides that, uh, there's no one out here for her to, like, make sure Alaska's, uh, like, being safe. It's actually more, uh, of a concern if, uh, Erisys is safe or not. So, uh, Rebecca talks to Alaska quickly, saying, uh, that if there's any trouble, just yell for help. And she'll be right out there. So, Rebecca, being a vampire rabbit, she has wings, kind of like a Drayson. She flies over the lava moat into the castle, uh, and then she, like, goes in, and, uh, she checks in on Erisys, and brings her outside, and that is when the both of them look back, uh, they're outside the castle and everything now, they look back, and, uh, see Cassie is still fighting Captain Benson, and that's when a spoiler happens. Oh, uh, God, I, I wish I could say the spoiler, because that's, that's, like, the best part of the story, you know what I mean? But, on the bright side, you guys in this Discord space right now already know what it is. At least I think so. Uh, but for the people watching this video right now, it's a spoiler that I really want to say so badly. It's, it's great. I think it's great. But... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm sorry, but you just gotta wait for the actual movie to come out in, like, 15 years from now. Uh, or something like that. Well, the original movie's coming out in, like, five to seven years. Second movie, a little while after that. And the third movie, probably, like, ten, fifteen years. Anyways, uh, so, spoilers happen. And 
it really upsets Erisus, and she's, like, really emotional about it. Uh, and, uh, the two are like, there's nothing we can do, we gotta go. But Erisus is having none of it. She runs up, she sprints the whole way up. Erisus sprints, Erisus now suddenly back in power because of seeing something traumatic happen, just runs up the chain up to, like, the main platform in the middle of the moat. And then, uh, she picks up, uh, the sword, uh, Cassie was using and started going ham, started going absolute ham on, on, uh, on Captain Benson. And then, another spoiler happens. And that's when, uh, Erisus is like, okay, we can go now. So, uh, they leave the castle, everyone leaves the castle, but Erisus turns around and sees someone standing on top of the tippy top of the castle. It's Vixen, the second-in-command pirate assassin, if you remember her from the first movie, and partially from the second movie. She's the one who ruined Aerith's life in the first movie, towards the end of it, if you remember that. So, uh, they go back to where they live, their little house, uh, they're, uh, all upset, they're really thinking about the whole day that just happened, and, uh, also Zack swoops by, also during the time while all that was happening before, Zack swooped in and, uh, I don't really consider this a spoiler, really, compared to everything else, so I will say it here. Uh, Alex, Alex just blows up. He's a robot, so he just blows up to, uh, like, the intense, like, fire rate of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, Zack. And it's not the, uh, the guns themselves or anything from the jet he flew, uh, that took him out. It was his magic. I'll get more to that in the fourth movie, which I'll briefly touch on. Uh, oh wow, we're already at the third one, I forgot about that. Uh, alright, so continuing on. So, the friends, Erisus friends, uh, they're, uh, they're all paying a visit to, uh, Erisus' dad, uh, King Renesis, and, uh, they talk about how things aren't always easy and stuff, and Renesis said he couldn't be there, and he's sorry for that, uh, because he had a, had a whole, like, uh, community of Draysons to manage and stuff like that still. But luckily, the father and their daughter, Renesis and Erisus, are on good terms. <laughs> so, after that, Erisus sees Vixen, like, parkouring around the city at night. So Erisus wants to stop Vixen once and for all, so she doesn't ruin anyone else. An, anyone else. So, she confronts her on top of one of the skyscrapers, and, uh, Vixen holds the Drayson Slayer. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. Okay, there's something I forgot to mention here, uh, before, okay? So, you remember how, uh, how Captain Benson held the Drayson Slayer, right? Like, for most of the duration of the movie? Well, when Erisus went aggressive at him, Erisus then collected the Drayson Slayer, and when she first held it, it burnt her paws a little bit, but she could manage it. She could man She didn't mind holding the blade itself. Uh, the entire thing is, uh, made of, like, death crystal stuff, that way. It's not just the, uh, blade, it's the entire hilt in the, in the cross guard and everything. Uh, but, but she could hold it. She could hold it. Fuck logic. Fuck logic. Whatever. So, so, uh, Erisys has the Drayson Slayer, and she's up... So, we're back in present time. We're, ba we're back in present time now. She's up on the rooftop of some building. Uh, she's holding the Drayson Slayer, and she sees Vixen get out her two swords, like Deadpool style. And the two start fighting. Uh, Erisys is like, this is what you get for doing that to my mom and all that. And the two start sword fighting and all that. Uh, they, they disarm each other. They start, like, uh, beefing it up with, like, fist fighting and stuff. And that's when... 
Aerith goes full aggressive mode. And remember how uh, in the first movie, Aerith like surgically got her like dragon parts of her body removed. Well, she suddenly shot out claws from her right paw, Wolverine style, and sliced like like cracked half the mask of Vixen off of Vixen's face. And that is, and like, it sends Vixen to the floor, well, the rooftop floor. And that's when Vixen looks and sees who Vixen really is. And she is devastated. I'll say that at the very least. I'm not going to re reveal who Vixen really is, but Erethus is devastated. And then that's when Erethus just can't understand how it aligns. And that's when she goes... And that's when she suddenly shoots out every original part of her body back Wolverine style and knocks Vixen through several buildings and shit like that. And then Vixen, the, the, uh, Vixen is unmasked now. Keep in mind about that. Like, her head is, like, completely invisible at this point. I'm not gonna say who it is. So, uh, so from here on out, when I say Vixen, I really mean... Uh, the mysterious name of who the real identity is, who I won't reveal here. You, the both of you do know who, uh, this character is. Uh, but I'm not gonna say it, uh, because this video is going to public YouTube, and I'm not spoiling it. I will say that. But I will say, the both of you do know this. I, the both of you do know this. I, I talked about it with you before. Uh, yeah. So, anyways... Uh, so yeah, if every time from now on forth when I say Vixen, I really mean the name of the person you know this actually is, okay? So Vixen, Vixen quote-unquote, uh, is sent through several buildings and stuff like that, starts to fang herself from Erethus, and then, uh, she falls out of one of the buildings, uh, uh, windows, and... Alaska just so happened to be there with her, uh, new and improved biplane and, like, catches Vixen. And, uh, Vixen is like, what the hell has gotten, uh, no, Alaska's like, what the hell has gotten into Erethus? And, uh, Vixen's like, that's a long story. And, uh, Erethus starts clawing at the back of the tail fin of the airplane. And then the airplane just starts spinning out of control and it crashes in, like, the bay of a beach. And it explodes, and, uh, uh, Vixen and Alaska are sent hurtling out into the water. Vixen wakes up and hears sirens and, like, uh, air raid sirens wailing and all that. And she hears, like, explosions, chaos going around her, gunfire. She sees a bunch of helicopters, like, flying overhead, which instantly get exploded by this, like, really ridiculously flat, fast flying dart of, like, a yellow dart just, like, flying through them all. And that's when she sees it's Erethus who's gone out of control anger and is killing everyone in the city. <laughs> out of anger. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Vixen, uh, takes the unconscious Alaska, uh, back to, uh, where the other friends of Erethus live. And, uh, Rebecca steps out the house, and she's like, how could you? you? You're not that, how are you this person? How could you be this way? And, uh, she's, like, very pissed at Vixen, and, uh, takes Alaska, uh, in, and, uh, kicks Vixen out and away, and Vixen doesn't know what to do, and she just runs away mysteriously. Uh, she's like a hooded figure now, again. So... Uh, there's a whole horror sequence here where, uh, Erethus, like, it's, like, focused on one house, and Erethus is, like, a beast, uh, like, uh, like, scouring the environment, and she's going, like, <sighs> like, she's, like, uh, gargling and everything like that, uh, like a wild animal, and, uh, there's, like, a little kid who looks up, uh, at her, and this little kid is a protogen, okay? His name is Zed. His name is Zed. Zed the Protogen. Remember that name, okay? So, uh, 
Zed's mom is holding a shotgun behind him, and Eris just pops out like a jump scare, and uh, the mother uh, shoots at Eris in the forehead, but the bullet does nothing as Eris claws and decapitates Zed's mom into pieces, which is, of course, going to be off-screen, because I want this to be PG PG-13 rated. <laughs> Well, mostly off-screen. I believe PG-13 should be a bit more intense than it is in modern film now, so, yeah. I would say the intensity of, uh, the blood in this, uh, film is about the same as, like, Murder Drones. Uh, I'd say that's- I, I'd say Murder Drones is a perfect description of what PG-13 should be. Well, it is a little too gory at times, because, you know, it's... I mean, but on your hand, it's robots, but whatever. So, uh... Aerith has gone out of control. Zack, uh, is on a rooftop building and, uh, meets up with Aerith. And Aerith is suddenly like, what the hell have I done? I would never do this, what have I done? And then that's when, uh, before the government catches up to her, Aerith just blasts off into space. And, uh, Drayson can hold her breath in space, by the way. That's, uh, how they got to Aerith to begin with. Uh, they go in. she goes into space, never to be heard from again, and Zack is like, what the hell just happened? Uh, Zack goes back to, uh, their house, and, uh, then it shows a singular frame in the film of, uh, the entire city on fire and in smoke, like a whole, like, atomic bomb just went off or something like that. And then it cuts to a day later, exactly, like, 12 hours later. And the buildings are still on smoke, but there's no fire. Everything looks like a commie block. Everything looks like it was built in Russia. Like, it lo everything looks like it was built in the middle of a war. So, uh, then there's like a final, uh, like, monologuing, uh, entry to Zach's diary. Well, not diary, journal. And he says, like, entry number this, that, this. And he, uh, kind of, like, discusses how, uh, friends can turn out to be the worst person you ever met. There's some friends who turn out to be the best people you ever met. And, uh, there's some instance, and then it was, like, kind of discussing how, like, Erisus just went crazy for no reason. No one knows what the hell happened. And, uh, then, in the final note, it says that Zach is not sure how he wants to go about his life. But he has came up with a theory uh, that he can find the gods, the creators of the universe, uh, which leads us to the next movie. So he gets in his, uh, 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 like, jet, which actually doubles as a rocket ship, and he flies into space. The final frame is of Vixen, uh, not, well, no longer identified as Vixen, but you know what I mean, the false name Vixen. Well, like, it is Vixen, but Vixen is secretly this person. The secret person who who was Vixen the whole time is roaming the streets, looks back at the city that Eris has destroyed, and she and Vixen feels guilt, sorrow, but also anger at the same time, and then it cuts to black as the credits come on. And that is the third movie of The Lives of Destiny. So, yeah. What would you guys say was, uh, the best one? Number one, number two, and number three from my given so far. And obviously, uh, taking in the account of what you know about the spoilers as well. Two, really? You like two the best? Okay, it actually surprises me. <laughs> I was told three and one were the best. But, yeah. That was the third movie, and now I will, I will talk about the sequels, but a lot more briefer. I'm just gonna give, like, a, the general important stuff that happens. So, yeah, the fourth movie, Zack goes into space, uh, he, uh, finds out Aerith's friends are all separated, and they're all living their own life, lives and stuff. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Vixen, uh, teams up with Rebecca, uh, and, uh, 
uh, Vixen sincerely apologizes for everything, and Rebecca's having none of it, but the, what are the two uh, gonna do else anyway? They have to team up. That, uh, what else are they gonna do to find Aerithus? So the two uh, reluctantly team up with each other, and they uh, uh, find a way to get into space to find where Aerithus went. Alaska is trying to uh, follow Zack uh, in space, too. Uh, okay. So, later on, Zack is still on Eris, and uh, he encounters these, like, swords. They, they have these, like, uh, delta-shaped fire jets. Uh, they're, like, they're like perfect triangles. They're flat. They're flat triangles. They're, like, the shape of an A, kind of, but without the hole in the middle. Uh, they're the shape of the delta logo, the Delta Aircraft logo, uh, they start shooting at, uh, Zack, they're, uh, it's like, uh, it kinda looks like, a the speeder chase in, uh, Star Wars Episode Six: Return to Jedi a little bit, and the Force of Endor, uh, it looks like the speeder chase a little bit, then, uh, all their ships crash, there's a little, uh, one-off fight between Zack and one of the Soars, uh, Zack gets one of the Soars, and then, uh, the Soars, like, I had a long life, my old friend. W would you do this favor for me? And he, like, asks him to, like, shut his eyes or something like that. And then, uh, Zack steals the Soar's jet, goes into space, and boards a, a bigger, uh, ship that belongs to the Soars, who are the species that raided, uh, the Drayson's planet to begin with. Well, it's also the Soar's planets, both their planets, but the Soars were greedy and wanted it all. So Zack goes to some sort of light speed and goes over to their neighboring planet, which is called Shima, which is a gas giant that looks a lot like Saturn. Uh, it has three habitable moons, uh, uh, and before he goes there, he goes on the space station that, it, or that orbits around uh, uh, Shima, which has normal gravity due to how close uh, to proximity it is to the planet itself, so it has normal Earth-like gravity. So. Normal 1Gs. Eris gravity. So he's there, uh, and he bumps in to this, uh, bounty hunter, who is a kid, and his name is Zed. Yeah. And, uh, he is on a mission to, uh, uh, get revenge, uh, on Erisist, uh, for her killing her mother. Killing his mother, sorry. Uh, during that event that happened in the ending of the third movie. So, the two kind of team up uh, against the Soars after they board on the, uh, the space station. There's a little gunfight, then they flee away. Uh, then, uh... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so... Later on, they split up. Uh, Zack thinks he's finally found a way uh, to access the realm of the gods to talk to them and see what the meaning of life is. So that's when Zack, uh, he uh, encounters this Soar who holds the Drayson Slayer now and has stolen it from, from uh, Captain Benson after he went... Uh, so... Yeah. So he takes the Drayson Slayer, and, uh, he duels against Zack on this, like, very thin, like, Empire Strikes Back-looking maintenance bridge thing, kind of like the place where, uh, Luke got his hand chopped off at. So, they start sword fighting, and, uh, the sword's like, you're doing very well. And, uh, Zack is like, I'm full of surprises, and they start Flashing blades and all that. Uh, gets to the point where, uh, uh, Zack starts to retreat, and, uh, the sword chases after him, and he, and he flies away before the sword could catch him. And that's when, in space, pay attention to this part, please, uh, Zack, he, he starts to, uh, feel focus in them. He starts to concentrate, concentrate, he starts to feel there's some part of him in him that feels more messiah-like than he thinks. And that's when his fingers literally start to spark, like spark blue electricity. And that's when he holds onto his sword, 
uh, that he got from the woods in the second movie, and the blade starts to uh, show blue cracks on it, glowing blue cracks. And then the whole blade turns blue, like a lightsaber, and it opens a portal in front of them, and it phases them into it, which shows them in front of the three gods. These gods are the gods of uh, the universe. They created the universe. And uh, he talks with them, and uh, uh, they're like, the meaning of life is you, or something like that. There is no meaning of life. It's just whatever you choose to make of it. That is the meaning of your life. Uh, and then uh, he enters a temple where he sees a character who is a spoiler for here. And uh, he encounters them. And uh, he's like, ah, Zach, my boy. How you doing? It's been a while since I've seen you. And then uh, it turns out this dude was a pirate the whole time as well, and was in second command, and just like Vixen was. So the two have a little sword fight, and Zack's like, I can't believe you, you're my, you're my homie, why would you do this? And then that's when Aerithus crashes in out of nowhere, and, like, darts at, at the mysterious, like, character who I can't name here, and, like, and he crashed to the floor, and they, uh, and then they, and then, then whatever happens beneath the surface is a mystery. There's a bunch of roaring and, like, sword clashing sounds that happen beneath. And, yeah. The doorway that Zack entered in glows, and out from it steps that penguin that... that Zack once saw in the woods, and he speaks. Uh, he says something motivational to Zack, uh, and, uh, Zack starts to have a change of heart. And then, that's when he meets back with Alaska, uh, in space, they reunite in Space Valley, and they also, uh, reunite with Rebecca and Vixen, and they all team up to go to one of, of, they go to Mira of the next star system over, which now has this massive, like, soar base on it, and they have to blow it up, so Zack and Alaska sneak in, and everyone else has to deal with the sores and also potentially find Erethus as they think she came here. So, once Alaska and Zack get to the top of, like, this, like, unbelievably tall building, uh, they get to the top and they see, uh, they see the character, they see a character who I cannot name here, uh, and... <clears throat> Sorry. And they... And they have a little confrontation with them. Uh, they start talking about how, uh, being a pirate isn't right, and it's, and it's evil and all that. So that's when, uh, uh, the big guy, uh, starts to push the kids over and starts sword fighting with them. And he sends, uh, Zack back to the ground, injuring him. Uh, and Zack just recently discovered his new power. He can create force fields, which he calls force shields. And if you recognize that name from somewhere, you're not crazy, because that is one of the eight attacks in the card game. Uh, Zack is the, is the one who, uh, is able to use force shields. Uh... So if you look at the card game server real quick and look at the A cards, uh, you can see the force shield is there, and that's what uh, it looks like. It's, it's like a spell that uh, Zack can cast using a sword, uh, and it summons a shield, like a blue transparent shield in front of them uh, to block attacks and stuff. Um, but anyways, with that aside, uh, that fails on him uh, as he's still learning it, and he's severely injured by a mysterious character. Uh, and Mysterious Character also, uh, uh, fights against Alaska and sends her back, uh, doubling her injuries as well, nearly killing her. And then, uh, Mysterious Guy is like, what have I done? How can I do this to the one person I truly care about? And then that's when he reflects on everything he's done. It's like, why am I still serving for someone who, who doesn't even exist anymore? And then he looks at the machine, uh, by the way, by the way, at this point, uh, he, they're all standing by a machine that is supposed to, like, eradicate the soul of every Drayson on the planet. 
and like cause chaos and all of that. So, uh, so, uh, mysterious character is staring at it, and then he's like, you know what, I have a change of heart. So he stabs his sword into the machine as it's too late to, like, uh, recode anything. So he has no choice but to destroy the wires, and the whole thing explodes, and, uh, it sends the mysterious character back, uh, right next to Alaska, and Zack just barely has enough strength to get to an escape pod, and, uh, tries to drag Alaska along, but, uh, Alaska's like, no, it's okay, I've done my part, you need to do yours, and then, uh, sends... Zack in the escape pod and sends him away out in the building, which explodes and kills both Mysterious Character and Alaska still inside. And Zack is now upset. All the characters have uh, dealt with the sores surrounding it. Uh, pretty much the good guys won and the sores have been defeated and the ones that did remain flew away in the space. Uh, Vixen, and Vixen, uh, who's changed as a person throughout the movie, uh, uh, takes care of, uh, Zack, gives him a hug, uh, from all he's been through, and then Erethus lands in front of them, but she doesn't attack, she kind of lectures at them for everything that's happened, and, uh, speaks in the same way that Death has to, uh, Puss, and Puss in Boots' last wish, uh, during, their, after the, their last battle, like, it's like a moment where Erethus, uh, is still angered, but, but she'll let it slide. Like, it, it's a lot like the scene where, uh, where Death, uh, goes like, I came to, uh, I came to take the life of a legend who thought he was immortal, but I don't see him anymore. Live your life, Puss in Boots. That's the kind of scene this is with Erethus, uh, and Erethus turns and leaves, and, uh, almost forgives Vixen, not quite, but almost does, as she flies away, and, uh, she says she won't be coming back, as she flies away into space. Well, she doesn't fly away in space, she, uh, yeah, she actually stays on Mira, the planet they're on right now, the snow planet of Mira. But she, like, flies to a distant location. So now, it is up to Vixen and Zack. Vixen and Zack, uh, they, uh, team up to, uh, to, uh, like, figure out where Erisus went alongside with Rebecca and the others as well. And that is where, uh, the fourth movie ends. So, yeah. Uh... I'm gonna briefly, very briefly, touch on the fifth and sixth movie because I don't know too much about them yet, okay? So in the fifth movie, uh, it's about Zack and Vixen, uh, looking for Erethus, and they meet some familiar faces along the way, uh, who I won't say here yet, uh, because I think that'll also be a spoiler, because they're also a lot of time there in the movie as well. Uh, like, the, the new characters that are in the fifth movie are from on a different The Lives of Destiny story that, uh, that is yet to be written, uh, but I do want to include them here, and I think it'll be a spoiler if I talk about them here, but I don't exactly know how it ends yet, uh, same for the sixth one, but all I know is that the sixth one is, uh, is, uh, that it's either to give their life, uh, to the universe to save it, and only one of them will be walking away unharmed. And that is pretty much the lives of destiny currently for you. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was probably the longest category of this entire thing. And it's already 4 o'clock <laughs> where I live, so... Oh my god, that was crazy. I thought this would be like just under 3 hours, but no, it was like... It's like gonna go more than like 5 hours, probably. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, alright, we're gonna take another 15 minute long intermission here, because we were there for a while, okay? Uh, and then I'll move on. I think we're, I think we're much more over halfway now, so, yeah. I'm gonna be playing some music, 
I will still be in this room, so you might be, so you might hear me breathing and stuff like that or whatever. But I will be playing some uh, music and stuff like that uh, in the meantime. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll be just eating my uh, bar noodles and stuff like that. So yeah, relax uh, for the next like 15 to 20 minutes, and we're just gonna chill for a little bit. No content here right now. What's a good one? I'm trying to find a good track. What's a good track? Uh, good thing I make a lot of songs that are like over five minutes long. Okay. I'll play... How about... How about this one? This is a good one. This is a good one. I like this one. 